am Darpan Jain. I am a Special Commissioner looking after solid waste management for the city of Bangalore. Uh, I took charge of this assignment around one year back and uh, this has been a very challenging assignment. Solid waste management as all of us are aware has number of dimensions. Uh, there is a technical side to it, there is a financial side to it, there is, there is a institutional side to it, there is a behavioral side to it. Unless and until all these components are uh, dealt with in a holistic manner, it is very difficult to produce a result uh, which is sustainable, uh, which is uh, accepted by the community and which fits in the overall framework of our uh, current legal framework. So it was really challenging on all these counts. We tried attending some of the issues and I think it is work in progress. Every day we have to attend, we have to improve, we have to learn, we have to experiment, we have to innovate and uh, it is learning by doing. It is very difficult to say that theoretically this is something which will work. So taking these individual items uh, on the financial side, I would say solid waste management is something which requires investment from the urban local body as well as the state government. It is not a very uh, appropriate uh, thing to state that waste can be converted to wealth without investment. In the hierarchy of waste management, as all of us are aware, it starts with reducing the waste, recycling the waste, recovering whatever we can recover out of waste. So all these components require investment. It requires local body to mobilize resources, prioritize its investments, and ensure that the delivery mechanism is sufficiently robust. So when I say investment, I feel that local body and the state government, it needs to invest as, as high as maybe 70-80% of the investment requirement. We did some calculations, I feel around 1000 rupees per capita is the approximate investment require investment requirement for each city of course there are a number of uh, options which are available but overall i feel this is the kind of money which each local body and state must mobilize and they should mobilize it themselves and it is not a big money if this amount is seen in comparison with the overall budget of the local body overall expenditure which the local body is doing on other components. It is not something which is very difficult for a local body to mobilize. I will give you an example. In Bangalore city we are having a budget of almost 5000 crores. So 1000 per capita means an investment of only 1000 crores. And this investment can also be phased over a period of 2 to 3 years time period. So it is not that difficult. It is only a question of prioritization. So this is something which I think uh, all of us have to understand. The policy makers need to take cognizance of this, that this sector requires investment from the local body and the state government. As far as technology is concerned, I think there are different options. Depending upon the size of the urban local body, different options need to be exercised. In our circumstances, in our conditions, with the kind of waste which we are generating, it has to be a mix of options. It cannot be the single sole option which will serve all the purposes. So I feel composting, biomethanation and RDF to energy. These are the options which most of the local bodies need to exercise. If the city is very big, like Bangalore, it has to go for composting, RDF and RDF to energy in addition to recycling whatever can be recycled. Very very important part of the solid waste management is uh, 
going for decentralized waste management try and ensure whatever can be recycled consumed within the ward itself so we had a very uh, good beginning bangalore that way has taken number of steps in that direction it has 185 dry waste collection centers which are there in almost each ward so each ward has one dry waste collection center which is collecting as high as 1 one, 1 and 1/2 tons of dry waste so that is a substantial quantity now our target is how we can increase it to 2 to 3 tons so if we can increase it to 2 to 3 tons with 198 wards i can remove almost 500 to 600 tons of waste at the ward level itself the dry component of the waste and that entire quantity will go for recycling so that will be a huge quantity of waste going for recycling similarly if we see the wet waste component in the wet waste component also especially the bulk generators like markets hotels we need to go for decentralized processing of the bulk waste it is very feasible there are number of options which are available biomethanation is one of the option which is completely closed which does not cause nuisance to anybody and it can be done on a small patch of land so educational institutions big campuses hotels bulk generators chol trees convention centers all of these have to be mandated that they must have their own decentralized facilities to handle wet waste biogas can be converted into electricity it can be converted into it can be compressed and can be used for cooking purposes also in bangalore we have set up 13 biomethanation centers of 5 tons capacity each our target is now to have one processing center in each ward so that at least 5 tons of waste we can wet waste we can deal at the ward level itself if for 198 wards we are able to do 5 tons in each ward almost 1000 tons of waste we can reduce coming out of the ward once we reduce the waste coming out of the ward what it means is that much of transportation we are avoiding then we are not taking waste from number of wards to a single location which helps in processing at a single location so the decentralized approach on the dry side on the wet side can at least remove 1500 to 1600 tons of waste for a city like bangalore for a smaller city also to a smaller extent it can remove once we do that then it would be always better to have multiple facilities for processing of waste we should not have single facility or only one or two facilities for a city it is always better for a city like bangalore to have eight or 10 facilities which process around 200 to 300 tons of waste if you have a facility which is processing 700 800 1000 tons of waste it leads to a very major processing area large number of vehicles need to move in that area the neighboring area would have issues so it is always better to have a smaller facility well kept facility facility which is near to the zone so in bangalore like we have eight zones so now almost we have 10 facilities in bangalore so each zone would have a separate independent facility the travel distance should not be more than 10 15 kilometers that should be the target but there are some components where you cannot have multiple decentralized facilities which is if you want to convert rdf to energy so that you can have one centralized facility for the city as a whole or maybe two facilities for the city as a whole so if you do that then uh, entire rdf the refuse derived fuel which is generated for the city can be handled in those facilities i think these uh, options are the most viable implementable and operational options uh which should be exercised by different municipalities composting biomethanation uh rdf to energy these are the way to go forward and in terms of processing capacity 
my recommendation is that city should develop minimum 150% of the processing capacity if our waste generation is 4000 tons we should have processing capacity of 1 uh, 1 uh, 2000 tons more 6000 tons of processing capacity should be there so there should always be a buffer to ensure that there is no default in processing of waste 100% processing of waste should be the target nothing should go to the landfill without processing and landfill our target is to reduce it to less than 15% that is the target which we have kept for ourselves so like that uh, I feel in 1000 rupees per capita you can do all this you can do a decentralized facility also you can do centralized facilities also you can do intermediate facilities also you can have composting plants you can have uh, RDF to energy plants so this is about processing of waste technical options, financials. <laughs>